are you fed up of the cold winter weather and would love to get away for a little bit of winter sun i feel yeah i am right with you on that one i would love a little bit of winter sun myself today we're going to take a look at nine fantastic destinations for some winter sun we're going to break it down into three budget three medium and three more expensive options the first recommendation on the budget list is Fuerteventura with a four and a half hour flight time from England. It is much nearer to Africa than Europe and the Spanish Canary Islands generally make for a reliable budget winter sun holiday destination. There are of course other islands in the Canary Islands other than Fuerteventura, the well-known Lanzarote, Gran Canaria and Tenerife which generally remain quite busy in the winter months and then the lesser known La Palma, El Hierro and La Gomera which are to be honest, really, really quiet and largely unvisited. But Fuerteventura, for me, offers a good balance. It is still pretty much open for business, but you will not encounter the mass of crowd that you see on the other islands, which makes it a really good mix of the two. There are miles and miles of heavenly white or golden sandy beaches with turquoise waters. With an average temperature of 18, 20 degrees, it may mean that sunbathing isn't necessarily on the cards, but it certainly does offer some winter sun and warmer weather than many places. And it means that it is a more comfortable temperature for sightseeing and possibly exploring different parts of the island that in the summer it is just too hot to do. The second recommendation on the budget list is Cyprus. Again, it has a four and a half hour flight time from England. The Eastern Mediterranean Sea around Cyprus is possibly a little bit chilly in the winter, but the island does get plenty of sunshine all year round and there's a good chance you're going to get some good t-shirt weather even in the coldest of coldest months. The average winter temperature is around 22 degrees so you should get some sun. It is warm there. Its rugged landscape offers stunning beaches and crystal clear waters. It's got a really long and interesting history and there are so many historical sites around the island. If you can only visit one, I would recommend visiting the ancient town of Curion, which has an amazing Greco-Roman amphitheatre. There's just so many things to do in Cyprus. You can visit the Tomb of the Kings, the birthplace of Aphrodite, the list is endless, and it makes the perfect winter holiday destination. If you would like to receive special perks, including unique badges and emojis, access to members only community posts and early access to every single video you can do so by clicking the join button down below or there will be a link in the description of this video the final budget destination is tagazut in morocco the flight time is about four hours from the uk so a little bit closer and this place it was once slightly rough around the edges kind of hippie town but it is fast becoming morocco's top surf destination it is still a sleepy little fishing village on the atlantic coast that's relatively unknown to most people it's full of old-fashioned charm with goats wandering the streets and local fishermen hauling in their daily catch if you are into surfing this is an ideal spot for some winter swells there are so many spots to suit beginners to seasoned pros and even if surfing isn't your thing there are plenty of beautiful hiking trails yoga and other activities the average temperature is around 21 degrees at this time of year but those saharan winds often make it a little bit higher than that moving on to the mid-range list first place i have for you is bali indonesia which is a 16 hour flight from the uk so we're getting a little bit further afield which is why we're going into the mid-range to get to these places the flights are going to be that little bit more expensive having traveled around much of bali myself i can attest that pretty much the whole island is beautiful with different activities depending on where you go in the island kuta and Semenyak offer beautiful beaches and sunsets with a big focus on the nightlife kangu which is just a few miles up the coast offers a more relaxed vibe it's got yoga dens health food cafes and lots of surfers it's a real surfy kind of place is kangu there's also udbud which is inland surrounded by rainforests waterfalls there's so many yoga retreats and relaxation places there 
it is rainy season november to march but it does tend to just shower for a short period of time and then we're back you can enjoy the sunshine again the second mid-range place is sri lanka which is a ten and a half hour flight away from england it is a fantastic place to get some winter sun i've spent some time traveling around sri lanka many years ago now but i have seen its beauty at first hand and oh my goodness it is its beauty is immense it really is there are so many amazing spots around this country such as Tangali which is it's an optimal spot for exploring southern Sri Lanka there's Gal with its old Portuguese fort Yala National Park where you can go on an elephant and leopard spotting safari there's tea plantations and temples it truly is a beautiful beautiful country where you could, if you wanted to, just simply relax on the gorgeous kind of fudge-coloured beaches. Or if you wanted to get out and explore, there are so many amazing things to explore on the island. The final place in the mid-range list is basically any Thai island. <laughs> the Thai islands are no stranger to most of us. We've seen pictures of them and they are the stuff of beach fantasies with their white sand, their beach shacks, hammocks and palm trees and turquoise sea. You know, it's we've seen those pictures. It is simply stunning absolutely stunning it is a 13 hour flight from the uk and there are dozens of islands to choose from each one offers something a little bit different phuket has some of thailand's most popular beaches colantas coral fringe beaches mangroves and rainforests but at the end of the day each island is absolutely stunning and the stuff of winter sun dreams Moving on to the expensive list. These places will be generally expensive to get to and generally expensive to stay at. The first one is the Maldives with a 10 hour flight time from the UK. There's plenty of sunshine constantly on offer from the Maldives practically any time of the year. We've all seen the pictures of the Maldives again. Gorgeous white sand islands, the palm lined atolls. It's a dream destination for so, so many. And we've seen the villas. You could simply enjoy life in those stunning, stunning villas that they have all over the islands and on the beaches. But there's more to offer from the Maldives. You can go and do yoga. There's fantastic snorkeling and scuba diving, parasailing and canoeing, and loads of other water sports there. The next destination is Zanzibar, which is a 12 and a half hour flight from the UK and its tropical climate is perfect for some winter sun. Zanzibar is generally used as kind of a, a tag on extra when people go on a, a safari to the places around, perhaps most famous Serengeti is a stunning beautiful island in its own right that you can of course just go and visit without going to a safari. It doesn't matter where you stay on Zanzibar. Trust me, every single beach is an absolute winner. The entire island is surrounded by this shallow shelf so that the water is at paddling depth for hundreds of metres before it turns into this deeper, darker blue where it, where it gets deeper. So it's possibly a really good option if you have young children. The final destination is Dubai. For year-round sunshine, spotless beaches, impeccable service. Dubai seems to be an obvious choice and it has really increased in popularity over the past couple of years. It has an average winter temperature of 26 degrees which is perfect. Again we've all seen the pictures of the palm which is a man-made sweep of beach which is packed full of superb high-end hotels. Each of them have got their own immaculate patch of beach. It is a perfect destination for family holidays there are plenty of non-beach activities to do in Dubai as well. It's home to the tallest building in the world that you could go and visit. There's the charming Dubai Creek, which hints at a time before all of these seven-star hotels and this luxurious kind of living came to Dubai. It is a fantastic mix between beach and kind of city living with lots of things to do. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if any of these pique your interest or have you been to any? Any other recommendations? Leave them down below in the comments. Subscribe for loads more travel content. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon. Bye bye.